Welcome back guys. A couple of weeks ago we made the mudroom bench. Turned out beautiful. I told you guys that I was going to be making the matching lockers and here it is. If you'd like to know how to make these lockers, stay tuned. I'll go over the full build. As always, the cut list will be in the description. If you would like to start with this bench, check out the video on that. This is not as hard as it looks. You totally have got this guys. Let's get started on this. We have a lot to go over. So for this build, for the backing, I chose the beadboard look. So I'm just ripping down my panels into three equal sections. So to support this beadboard and the locker itself, I'm using three different two by fours as my main support system. These two by fours are 57 and a half inches long each. The most important part about these is the center two by four needs to be 40 inches from the bottom of your frame. This will allow you to actually put the coat hooks in later and have something stable to actually drill into. Since the bead board is a little less than a half of an inch thick, I'm gonna be using about an inch and a quarter screws just to hold these in place. So once all of our panels are nice and screwed down, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna finish out our frame. So we'll take our measurements, we'll make our cuts, and then we'll fasten this together. For this, I'm gonna be using pocket hole joinery. And these sidebars for this frame is just gonna make sure that everything is straight. This thing will not move. It's just gonna sturdy everything up. So of course, once I get everything put together, I realized that I forgot a step. I needed to put some pocket holes in the bottom board where it will actually attach to our bench. So I had to take it apart and put those pocket holes in. So now it's time to put together our two side panels. The base for these panels are gonna be half inch cabinet grade plywood. The two outside boards are two inch pine. This is gonna be painted, so I really don't care what type of material that I'm using for that, but pine is what I chose. The top and the bottom are gonna be three inch wide material, while the two middle slats are actually gonna be two inch wide material. Again, all of the dimensions of this material will be in the description. So to move on, we throw on some glue, we put in some tacks or bread nails, and this is where we're at. So with the sides put together, we're ready to attach those to the backing. So the sides will actually attach to the outside edges of our backing. So we're gonna be attaching these sides to our two by four frame with three and a half inch long screws. And that's all I'm doing here is making a countersink that way that I can finish this off with some plugs. And once you have this side finished, just move on to the next side and repeat. So with the sides on, it's starting to come together. We can actually see what this is going to look like finished. So let's get started on these cubbies. So to build the cubbies, I'm gonna be using the same half inch plywood ripped down to nine and a half inches wide. And once you have all the parts cut for the cubbies, go ahead and install your pocket holes. So the first board I'm gonna be installing is 50 inches from the bottom of this locker. And to assemble the cubbies, I'm gonna be using an inch and one quarter pocket hole screws. As you can tell, I kind of got a little carried away on the amount of pocket holes. I think that the recommendation is actually six to eight inches apart. Yeah, I kind of overdid it, but overkill is not always bad. And so for a second board that we're gonna be installing is gonna be a mirror image of the first one that we just installed. The spacing between these two boards will be 13 and three quarter. Now for the dividers, and as you can see, again, I got super, super carried away on my pocket hose. It is what it is, it works. 
So for these, we're actually gonna be using nine and a half inch by 13 and three quarter material that will not move at all because I put 10,000 pocket holes in it. So with our cubbies in place, it's now time to make our face plate for the whole unit. So we're gonna measure this out and we're gonna make our cuts. So after my pieces are cut, I'm just gonna lay everything out, make sure it fits before I actually join all of this. Like our sides, for the face plate, I'm gonna be using three quarter inch pine. Everything is gonna be ripped down to two inch strips except for the very top plate. I'm gonna be ripping it down to three inches. That way we have plenty of room for our crown molding. So now that I see that all my parts are gonna fit right, I've made any trimming that I need to do, I'm going to actually assemble this faceplate. Before moving it over to this work surface, I actually used pencil marks to line up where each one of my spacers needed to be. And before fastening down, I'm just making sure that everything is fitting just right. A little bit of glue, more bread nails, and we're ready to go. Now we're just gonna measure out what we need for our inner frame. Most of this is gonna be for decoration, but the center boards are actually gonna be covering the joints that we have from our bead board. And for this, I'm gonna be using three quarter by two inch pine all the way around. After filling in some nail holes with wood putty, we give it a little sand and she's ready for paint. And if there's one thing that I cannot stand, it's painting. I would rather sand than paint. So this is where you uh, get the help of your last born child. And he did a good job. Don't worry about right next to the boards on the inside because that's all gonna be covered with our trim. And to cover up my 10 million pocket hole screws, I'm actually just gonna cover those up with some plates. This is just quarter inch ply. You could actually use plugs, but that would take me a month. So this is how we did it. And now it's time for our trim. The trim is what really makes this pop. I am not going to tell you every single dimension for all of this trim because you may pick out a different trim than I do. I'm using a three quarter inch cove molding for the insides of the frame. And we will be using the same three quarter inch cove molding for the insides of this big board backing. And remember how we left the top of this face plate at three inches? This is why. Now I'm prepping the material for my crown. I left about a one inch offset that way that it would still look like there was two inches exposed in the front matching everything else, but still leaving plenty of room to fasten my crown. And this next step is gonna be up to you. I just wanted to dress this up a little bit, so I'm using a one inch flat trim just to kind of make things pop. And there we have it. We've placed our locker on top of our bench, tied everything together. This is a beautiful piece. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because I have plenty, plenty more where this came from.